problems that they have. Um, I, my pension seems to get smaller every, every year. I have difficulty meeting my rent. I do all these things. I'm not getting paid except for the accommodations. That's all. You're just an ordinary man. Yes. I mean, I never went to university. I, I worked my ass off all, all through my life. And I suffered the indignity of the Great Depression and uh, starvation as a kid. You were, this was in the 1930s? Yeah, 1920s and 30s, right up to 48 when the NHS was formed after the Second World War. So how old are you, Harry? 92, going on 93. So you're Harry Leslie Smith? Yes. The guy who wrote Harry's Last Stand. That's correct. That's the one there, you see. What's that book about? This is about my past and how the present world is revolving back to my early life. The, uh, the country is going downhill. We're going back to the starvation of my youth and the, uh, the country being run by oligarchs and industrialists. This week I saw uh, Jeremy Corbyn, um, he was <coughs> confronting the Tories in, uh, I don't know whether you saw it, in uh, Prime Minister's question time with, um, with the poverty, with yeah. the tax credit cuts and, and um, they were just laughing. Oh yeah, yeah, of course they would. I mean, you got to remember too, uh, in the 1920s, everything was controlled by the landowners. The landowners owned the mills, the, the mines, uh, everything where people worked, and they could tighten up or loosen the strings, whichever they wanted to do. Usually, they were cutting benefits and. Uh, not benefits, they just paid wages, that's all. And uh, starvation was rampant. Uh, for one thing, he healthcare was only for profit, so poor people just couldn't afford doctors or hospitals or medicine. It was, it, it was a ghastly time. In fact, uh, disease was absolutely rampant. Uh, one of my sisters contacted TB and uh, she never recovered from it, although my mother looked after her for some donkey's years. And finally we had to take her to a, a workhouse infirmary where she died at the age of 10. And uh, we didn't have money to pay for a proper funeral, so she was dumped into a pauper's pit with a dozen or well, twenty other people, you know. It was a ghastly time. And, and I'm afraid this is what this, the, the Tory governments want to go back to this. But it, they, 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 well, when they say that there's a hundred families who contain 90% of the wealth of the world, there's something going wrong, you know. I was, te I was telling you, but last night we had this woman who was um, crying. I mean, she was, she was completely distressed. Yeah. And she said that she was a Tory and that she'd voted Conservatives. And that David Cameron had said that he wouldn't cut the tax credits, and he has. And she doesn't know what she's going to do. You know, I, I, I really find it hard to believe. I, I, I think maybe it was just a little performance. No, it was real, Harry. Was it real? It was real. I, I, it shows you my trust of Taurus, you know. I, I don't believe anything they say much of the time. But I, I know one thing for sure. Their interest is not in the the ordinary citizens. Why, why, why do you think people would vote Conservative? Because they've always voted Conservative. And, and, and uh, they may not be particularly rich, but they have a fairly good job. 
and they feel it's uh, it's their duty. We had this. Um, <coughs> the trouble, it... trouble with the the lower classes is, is the fact that they they've lost heart, they've lost interest. The, their attitude now is, what can I do? I can't change anything. I just have to suffer what they give me and what they throw at me. And it's uh, it, it's a wrong attitude. What they don't realise is, if the working classes, the poor people, would just simply unite and decide that they were going to throw out a government that they were not happy with and went to the voting booth at election time and voted en masse, they could change their lifestyle a hundred percent. How can we how can we raise people's uh, con uh, political consciousness? How can we have a, a, a some kind of epiphany like like in Scotland? Uh, I think it, uh, it it needs a team of people like myself who are constantly going around the country and and speaking uh, and telling them what to do and how to get out of the... Uh, you see, we're, we're in such a rut now and, and until we get out of this rut, life will continue. What do you think uh, of Jeremy Corbyn? I think he's a, he's a hope for the future. I really do. I, I think his, his, his plan will, will be for the benefit of everyone. He won't change it overnight because it's gone too far, but he will have the interests of the ordinary working people at heart, and slowly but surely he will get things balanced. Maybe he can be like the first of many, can't he? Oh, I, I think so. That That is my hope of, of him. I met him one time, uh, I think it was in... Uh, 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 oh, where they had the election this year, down in the south. And uh, I found him quite engaging and, uh, and a, a man of great sympathies. So you was in the Second World War, you, you was... Uh, yes, I was in the Royal Air Force. You was in the Royal Air Force? Yes. And uh, I'm presuming you have uh, very strong values oh, about... Oh. Um, uh, my, my point is, UKIP and especially the Tories, they're draping themselves in, in the Union Jack and they're framing the political thing like uh, attacking Jeremy Corbyn and they're framing around the Union Jack, around British values. Yes, uh, I, sometimes, you know, I, I feel older people particularly, I think, are flocking to uh, UKIP uh, because they feel that they are going to preserve and increase their pensions and what have you. But it, it's not true. UKIP is out for their own benefit and that is all. Uh, I, I, I don't think they'll ever become a, a party of any strength. And uh, They got four million votes in the last election. Yes, yeah. But the right wing agenda, the agenda of the Tories is to is, is to co opt British values. That's their strategy to you know, this is the the last refuge of, of the scoundrel is, is patriotism. Yeah, but what are British values anymore? If you asked uh, if you had a consensus around the country, I think people would say it's not the Britain that I remember. And it isn't. You know, in the old days, Britain had leaders who were for the people and by the people, and they adhered to those rules. After the Second World War, my uh, my brethren in the in the Air Force and, and in services all around the world, we swore up and down that we were not going to put Churchill in power when we came out because we knew what life would be like for, with him in power for the ordinary people. He was good for the war purpose. 
but uh, it was, we made up our minds and uh, when the 45 election came up, it was a, a tidal wave from uh, Germany, from Europe, from the Far East where any British soldiers were stationed and airmen.